Range is the distance an aeroplane flies between takeoff and landing. As powered aeroplanes cannot stay in the air forever due to their finite fuel supply, range is sometimes referred to as fuel mileage. Maximum range is achieved with minimum fuel flow and maximum speed. Maximum range can be defined as the minimum fuel used by an aeroplane over a given distance. Any factor that increases the fuel flow during the flight reduces the aeroplane's maximum range. Range can be represented by a simple formula. This formula is distance in nautical miles divided by fuel quantity available in kilograms. When we divide top and bottom of these relationships by time, we obtain a new expression. This new expression is for specific range. Specific range can be expressed in two ways. As specific air range, which refers to the number of air miles flown per unit of fuel used, or if there is wind to be considered, specific range can be expressed as specific ground range, which refers to the number of ground miles flown per unit of fuel used. Specific fuel consumption is a measure of engine efficiency. This is the ratio of fuel used per unit of thrust produced. The lower the value of this ratio, the more efficient the engine is. This is achieved by lowering fuel flow per unit of thrust. For a propeller-driven aeroplane, fuel flow is equal to specific fuel consumption multiplied by power used. For a piston engine aeroplane, this occurs at lower altitude where the power required matches full throttle height. And for a turboprop aeroplane, at medium altitude where the true airspeed is higher and the propeller is still relatively efficient. For a jet, fuel flow is equal to specific fuel consumption multiplied by drag. The higher the true airspeed and the lower the power required, the greater the specific range. To maximise the range of a jet aeroplane, true airspeed must be high, but at the same time, specific fuel consumption and drag must be low. This is the drag curve of a typical jet aeroplane. Drag is lowest at the bottom of the curve. This is called minimum drag speed, which is the airspeed for best endurance. For best range, however, we want the highest possible airspeed for the lowest possible drag. We want the highest drag to airspeed ratio. The maximum ratio can be found by drawing the tangent from the origin of the graph to the curve. This is the speed for best range. Any other airspeed along the curve reduces the ratio and reduces the range. Let's have a look at this concept in another way. The drag curve is relatively flat at the bottom. From minimum drag speed, the airspeed may be increased significantly with only a small drag penalty. While drag increases a little, the airspeed increases significantly, and this is good for maximum range. Consequently, the overall effect is that there is an increase in specific range. Maximum range occurs at 1.32 minimum drag speed. There is one element remaining in the formula which we can improve on for better range. To increase range even more, specific fuel consumption can be decreased. One way to do this for a jet aeroplane is to fly as high as possible. Operating as high as possible provides higher true airspeed 
for any given indicated airspeed, which improves the specific range. In nil wind, specific air range equals specific ground range. In strong headwind, however, the tangent must be drawn from a new origin to obtain the airspeed for best specific ground range. The tangent drawn from this new origin touches the curve at higher airspeed than the airspeed in nil wind. This shows that higher airspeed gives better specific ground range in a headwind. This makes sense because flying faster minimises the time of exposure to the negative effects of headwind. On the other hand, a tailwind requires a lower airspeed than the airspeed in nil wind. A lower airspeed allows more time in the air to maximise the favourable effects of tailwind.